Hello everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm a developer advocate here at Arama and I'm going to teach you how to get started with Arama Search. So I'm assuming you just made your account and you're just staring at this page and you don't really know exactly where to go from here, like how to make your first search. And that's why I'm here to help you make your first search. We're going to search for things and it's going to be great. So what I want to do in this small video is to import a JSON file and search through it. I'm someone who loves data, so I have a bunch of JSON files on my computer. I know it's kind of weird to love data, but you know, you gotta be someone like that to work at a search company, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's create a new index, which is to think of it as a bucket for your data, and let's give it a name. So give it something that makes sense to you. In my case, my data is a bunch of PlayStation 1 games, so I'm just gonna call it PS1 PS games. Cool. Choose the data source. So. This depends if you have a JSON or a CSV file. I'm more of a JSON girl, so we're going to go with JSON. And click Create Index. This will, behind the scenes, just basic create the base for your index that now you need to feed, right? So we're going to upload, first of all, we're going to upload a JSON file that I have here. So it's this PS1.json. And as you can see, it's 4.3 megabytes. Turns out the PS1 had a lot of games, y'all. Okay. The next step that may confuse you a little bit is this part. So setting your searchable properties. Okay, what does this actually mean? So by default, Arama needs you to set the properties in which you want to search. This is so that it's faster and that it gives better results. So let's say like I have, for example, in this data set, I have a bunch of stuff like the, the checksum and the URL for images that I don't want to search in. It will just probably find me random things that I have nothing to do with the search that I did. So I'm going to come here and first I'm going to show you the actual file we have. So I have a file here, ps1.json. You can see that a lot of it is random and just numbers that lead to other IDs. This is from a small website that I have. And we care about the name, we care about the slug, and I would say we also care about the summary, right? These are the main three things that we really care about. So as you can see, like a lot of this is like videos and I also have a bunch of screenshots. So yeah. So slug, summary, name. Let's add that. Cool. So this is a JSON schema, which means everything must be double quoted. This is very important, otherwise it will yell at you. So name, which is a string. We also have the summary, which is a string. And let's also add the slug just in case. So I'm going to add a slug, and you guessed it, it is also a string. And we're done. We can just let Arama do its thing and upload itself to the cloud. Yes, just remember, there's no such thing as a cloud. So while that's starting, let me show you what I have right now. So this is what I have, and it's basically just a random assortment of PS1 games just to have like a UI, you know what I mean? And if I search, nothing happens, right? And you can see here that we already have an API endpoint and we have a public API key. So first things first, let's install the Orama client. So I'm going to come here, copy and paste that, and I'm going to open warp, clear all of this, and do a yarn at, it's been done before. So I use yarn because I'm old and I'm used to yarn, but you definitely do not have to use yarn. I am not forcing anyone here to use yarn. Please use whatever makes you happy. Okay, so this is our client. So let's paste it up in here. So in our app, at the top, I'm just going to add this. So this merely imports the Orama client, sets its endpoint, sets its API key, and now we can do things with it, like search in it. So if I create a function here to actually do the search, so I'm going to say const search games equals a function, and I'm going to say const results goes await. So client, and client has a search function, as you see. So, and the thing, the main thing that you need to pass to it is a term. So let's say my term is Tony. And this has to be async, otherwise it will definitely yell at us. So let's call this on the page load. So a cheeky use effect. Love them cheeky use effects. Don't forget to add your empty array and call search games. Cool. And let's also console.log this. So console.log the results. That's cool. So if I come over here and go to my console, we have hits. Okay, so couple of things. By default, Orama will return you 10 hits. So this is the default value. You can change it. So let's say that I actually only want five. So I pass a, that was weird, a limit of five, right? And now I actually only get five, but the count is still 11. So the count is how many 
games in this case, he found with the word Tony in it, right? And then we also have how much time it passed and we have the hits. The hits is actually what we want, like that's our games, right? So if I open this hits up and I see this, open this document, you can see like, okay, cool. Yeah, this is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Okay, let's add these games. So if I come here and I delete this, I can say set games equals to results that hits, right? And let's to make sure you can never trust JavaScript, empty array. And in here, I want to say, this is the games. Cool. So this is the search for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And this all makes sense. I guess MTV Sports Skateboarding has Tony somewhere in its like summary, which makes sense. I mean, Tony Hawk's was the big thing on the PS1 and PS2, and I love them every day. Great man, great game. So, okay, it's working, but it's not hooked up here, is it? No, we got nothing. So let's do that. So we don't actually want to use this term, right? What we want to do in this case is actually use our query. So let's pass in the query and let's pass in the query here. Go back. And if I reload, we get some random assortment of games. Actually, let me get more than five. So let me get 10 because we're just searching for an empty string, right? That it's not gonna return us anything valuable. So if I say Tony Hawks, you can see that it works. It's also quite fast. So yeah, we can now search for Tony Hawks. So what happens if I search for Tony Hawks? Yes, so not a thing, right? So we depend. this depends a lot on what you want to do. If you wanna offer some tolerance to the user, you can say, Tolerance and for example, let's say one and if I say this this automatically returns me a new version and what one means is that it allows one typo per cent per word so I can also have a typo here and this will return the same thing even though now tiny tank actually goes above because that is not even close to Tony Hawk's right and I guess that's it we made a search and it works and it's pretty fast. I can search for Resident Evil now and I get Resident Evil. That's cool. Yeah. So in this video, we actually created an index. We fed this index and we created a search for it. So th I would say this is a pretty good eight minutes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one.